Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and that guy that really hates Armada Hotshot. This is not a test. This is a random review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Sanjo Gatai, Go Kenzan, for joining the Patreon campaign. I can't help but feel like that's a little bit of a shot because of the little jabs I've been making at Transformers Go lately. And you know what? Fair. Absolutely fair. Thank you very much for the contribution. Thank you for your support and helping to keep the channel going and the grind grinding. So today we've got a review because I need to review these. Uh, this one is just for me. Jada Toys released the first wave of their Mega Man action figures. And if you know me by now, there is only one thing I obsess over to an extent as I do Transformers and even above Kamen Rider, and that is Mega Man. I will get just about any new Mega Man product that comes out. This is like a childhood favorite. So I was super excited about these. I was like constantly, you know, hitting up Jada Toys on Twitter, just going like, hey, I would love to do something with you on these. And uh, yeah, uh, just... And because of that, for full disclosure, I had to pay for these with my own money. <laughs> I ain't working with anybody on this. As again, this is all me. But if, Jada, if you're out there, hit me up. So let's actually take a look and see how they came out. Uh, of course, starting with the Blue Bomber himself. I will mention, all of these pretty much have the same range of articulation. Uh, it's pretty easy to keep the articulation consistent in Mega Man designs. Um, yeah, they pretty much have mostly the same body structure until you get into some of the odd ones. So here we have Mega Man in his traditional two-tone blue. Something I actually like that they've done here is that the bodysuit area of Mega Man is a much more matte finish than the actual armor and his helmet and such, which has a far glossier look to it. It definitely makes the two look distinct from each other. Uh, and it really does give the look of him wearing his armor components, which is actually a pretty smart touch. Yeah, proportionally, pretty spot on. Like, it's about exactly what I would expect out of a Mega Man design. Uh, the sizes and shapes are sometimes hard to get across correctly. You know, trying to get that balance between Mega Man with a large head akin to, you know, the more traditional art and you know more normal proportions of modern art but i think they hit a nice little balance here like this just plain up hits me as mega man without any real issue so really happy with how that came out we can go in close up so you can actually take a look at how the head was sculpted and they did a pretty nice job on it so paint looks pretty clean on mega man on his eyes there's really not a whole lot of paint across the toy outside of like details on the helmet uh, and the faces themselves. A lot of this is just solid molded plastic. You do see a little bit of red there on the inside of his helmet's ears. You also see red on the bottom. These are canonical details. Uh, if you build the model kits, you would know those very well. You just rarely see them in Mega Man's design because you never really like see the bottom of his feet or anything. But it shows that they're actually paying attention. Yeah, and all the way around, you got little details again, like the little slits in the back of his helmet. Again, not a detail you would know just from playing the 8-bit games. Nice to see them actually paying attention. So yeah, sculpt-wise, paint-wise, I'm really happy with how he came out. The detail on this is going to be articulation, so let's go into that. So, the head, ball jointed up here and in the torso. So you have a lot of range and motion with that head that it is capable of. Great to see that. You do have a universal shoulder joint, uh, and it's not really obvious from the top. They actually did a pretty good job of hiding the cut, so you can actually have a much more smooth look to the toy. There's a bit of a detent to it, but it's pretty soft, so you can defy it. You can bend it a little bit uh, more to your liking. There is a rotation at the uh, just above the elbow, because the arms can unpin uh, and swap out for other things. The elbow... About 90 degrees of bend. That's a pretty good elbow to me. Wrist full 360 rotation, as well as a hinge in the wrist, which lets you get some more subtle details and get poses exactly the way you want them. 
Love little detail spots like that. The torso does have its own joint. It twists left and right as well as back and forward. So you have, you know, you actually have like an act. Here, here. Get your arm out of the way so I can show them your torso bend, which is actually a pretty good range of motion. Take a look at that. Really nice. Now comes one of the smarter details I've ever seen in a Mega Man toy line. I can't remember anyone else doing this, and this is super smart. So, let me get the arms out of the way so you can see that there is a waist joint as well. And you're little bringing it in close so you can even see it this way. The waist joint actually deforms the pelvis armor. This pelvis is actually a softer tone of plastic, and it will bend to whatever position your Mega Man twists in. This way you aren't left with that weird ridge of either like a flat overhang of his midsection or like a flat extension and like plateau look on his underwear if the if he just has like a standard traditional waist cut. It's a really clever piece of engineering. It's a really smart idea. So I'm I'm super happy with that. All right, so let's move into the thighs. Um, because of the underwear, they are a little bit restricted, but you can actually get a pretty good range. You know, Mega Man looking pretty spry here. A little bit on the little bit of obstruction toward the back. His butt won't let him go backwards too far. Thigh swivel completely intact. Works really really well. We have a knee bend. Pretty good one at that. There is it also pegs in, so you also have a bit of rotation there. And then at the feet, you do have a rocker that goes left and right. And you can also bend the feet forward and backward. Gives you plenty of range of motion with your Mega Man figure. So if I, let's say, put all of his parts like so. Give him that deep chest bend. Put his arm like so. Bring his head up. Bring his arm out. You can actually get them into a pretty decent slide pose. This is one of those things that I kind of test my Mega Man figures with. If they can actually recreate the slide or at least come somewhat close to it. Good Mega Man figure. Good pose ability range. And it really does come from just how deep those ankles can go. Like Because of that, you actually can get into some pretty extreme poses that Mega Man typically isn't capable of in most of his action figures. I'd probably have to go to something, like even the Kodo Bukia models would probably not be able to pull this off. I'd probably have to go to like the D-Arts figure from way back, which is really impressive to say. So, that's the articulation range I'm expecting on all of these figures, but that's not it. They also have accessories. So for starters, decapitate your Mega Man. I know Wiley, you're happy at that part. We can pop on a secondary head, which has him in a much more aggressive battle-ready uh, battle ready face. I do prefer the more calm one, because Mega Man is supposed to be like a pacifistic robot, fighting only because he has to. But to actually get his actual combat poses, yeah, you probably need a more accurate head, so not too big of a deal. He has swappable hands as well. If we pop these off, I'll go ahead and put both of them on just so you can get a look at both at the same time. On his left, we have a splayed out hand, and on his right, we have a cupped hand. The cupped hand feels like this is where an E-Tank goes, but uh, there's none included in this particular release. And It's always weird when you get like asymmetrical hand options, but it's not a terrible thing here, especially because this is Mega Man we're talking about, which means at some point, we're going to have to, you know unpeg his arm and swap on his arm cannon so if we go ahead and uh, push that on the arm cannon replaces the elbow so it has the exact same elbow joint the only issue i have with the arm cannon is that it's sculpted to be his right arm and typically because you are going left to right in a Mega Man game he is traditionally depicted as left-handed with his cannon so it's a bit of a discrepancy here. Uh, you're free to ignore it if you wish. But, you know, uh, the Mega Buster does technically work in both, uh, you know, on both sides of the character. You know, and I can actually have him holding his own weapon like so. Really do. Again, I really like the options this thing allows you to have. 
Aside from that, all these figures in Wave 1 also have an effect part complete with a double hinged stand. So for Mega Man, he does have his typical plasma shot. It's given a little bit more style. It's not just a flying yellow tennis ball. And yeah, this double hinge stand is going to let you pose it however you want. If you get multiple Mega Man, you can line up all, a whole bunch of them. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun. There's a lot to this figure. A lot more than I expected. Uh, like I said, there's some posability here that I don't think I could get outside of like the really high-end Mega Man figures that I've gotten over the years. So to get it at a retail level and affordable price is actually pretty cool. All right. So that's your... That's your basis. That's basically what you're going to get out of all of these. So we can move on to the Robot Masters in the wave. Starting with Iceman. I'm going to admit, I had to double check the expression on his face. So, yeah. Uh, in most artwork, and even in his sprite, if you're paying attention, he does have that open-mouthed expression. So that is entirely correct, though I still wish I had just like a neutral face, because it does look a little bit odd. It does look a little bit odd, uh, just standing like that. But, again, it is well detailed. It is well painted. Iceman does have a little bit more detail going on, as a lot of the Robot Masters do, compared to Mega Man. The little studs in his belt are individually painted. Uh, you know, Of course, the rim of his helmet has that nice, like, uh, fluffy look to it, like it's insulated. Little details... You know, like the strap on the back of his helmet cap, and then the tank on his back, all painted and detailed correctly. Again, lots of attention to detail I really, really appreciate out of these figures. Now again, like I said, he's got the same range of articulation. We don't really need to go over it again, though I will give him a pose at the end of the part rundown. Uh, just so you can have some idea of what you got going on here. So we're going to go ahead and swap in his additional hands. Boom. Boom. And he has two different hands as well. Uh, you have one splayed out hand again. And then you have a much more calm, relaxed hand. And this is for one of his more traditional poses. But for that, we really need to take his head off. I don't get, no, I don't get tired of that. Pop his other head on. And now you've got a much more aggressive looking Iceman. Which, by the way, how do they not get sued by Marvel every time they make one of these? No clue. So, the idea here is that the hand is actually supposed to look like it's part of his actual ice attack. Because typically, when you see in the art, he actually has his hand cupped over his mouth as he's firing the ice slasher. So, if I were to give him, you know, some kind of, you know, some kind of, like, action-y, like, attack pose like so change the focus so you can see it better and then we can bring in the 3d rendering of the ice slasher weapon that kind of completes the look in fact if i if i switch it up and bring it in closer you know it looks even more appropriate for this particular attack yeah these are fun to pose around i actually like how they've rendered the ice slasher it's this big cone of ice coming at you. I, because of the name, I always just remember it as a blade. But yeah, like in three dimensions, that kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. So if we're talking about Iceman, I guess Fireman is the appropriate boss to incorporate into the same wave. So that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, yeah, here. I'm giving everyone a spotlight here so Iceman can go to the side. Now this one also has a lot more going on compared to Mega Man. He does have full body armor that is separate from his undersuit. He does have uh, some extra knee guards as well as translucent effect parts, which is a really cool choice, and they're done fairly well. So again, close up on how Fireman looks. I don't know how they get away with designing these toys, or like designing these characters to have eyes set like that without looking cross-eyed. It's weird, but somehow they pull it off. You can see the torch on his head has all those individual grooves painted in black. You can see, again, obscure details on the back, like this bright and green and the yellow uh, little yellow arrow there. Lots of little parts. You have the hands, which have been painted correctly. I should say the lack of hands. So his barrels for his arm cannons have also been painted correctly. Once again, we check the feet. 
feet have also been painted. Lots of cool detail going on here. I know, irony, considering he's fire. Now, for him, he doesn't have additional hands. He does have an additional head. So we can go ahead and... I didn't mean to make a pun there. I apologize. We can go ahead and swap that in. This one doesn't have nearly as much of a visual effect, but if you do see his uh, standard head and it does look a little bit cross-eyed, this is going to fix it for you because now he's got a side glance going, which is kind of a cooler pose, if you ask me. So, you know, has a good look to it. Again, everything on it, very well painted. Now, what really gets to me here is the fact that he's got all these different fire effects to him. So, obviously, this is all pegged in, so you can change this and twist it around to change the direction of the wind. So, that's one way to play with it. You also have one straight flame effect for one hand, and then one kind of, I don't know, like at the ready. I don't know, it's kind of like he's got the pilot light going, but he hasn't put it through the through the actual fuel yet. So he's just kind of like prepared here and actually like on the attack here. Which does get you a cool range. I will say, same posability as all the others, of course, but the torso armor, the shoulder guard here, is individually hinged as well, so you can adjust it to the angle of the arm so nothing looks awkward. Again, really cool attention to detail on this. My only grievance with Fireman is that these parts are not interchangeable. Like, these two parts, you can kind of flip around, but they are really sized for the ports that they are in. Like, they fit snugly, uh, just under closer examination, they're not going to look right. The biggest disappointment is there's only one of these. Like, it would have been cool to have two, like he's just standing ready to open fire on things. Or it'd be cool if it fit on his head to really look windswept. It doesn't fit on there at all. Uh, the shape just isn't right. So, he does have some cool effect parts, though. I think there's some versatility that could have been here that is missing. But, if you go with what it is, it is still pretty effective and pretty nice looking. And again, effect parts. It's with these that I point out that a lot of the flame effect on him is multi-hit, is multi-hued. It's cast in the yellow translucent, and then it looks like it's a translucent paint over it to get the orange. I mean, it could be it could be mixed plastic as well, uh, but I'm guess you know, it's kind of hard to tell without like taking paint thinner to it. Either way, it actually does have an appropriate fire look going from the yellow to the orange. Looks really really cool. Like it really does look like like cartoony flame. It's a really well done job there. So, what do I think here? So, I think there's some missed opportunity with some little things about these, but they are nitpicks at best on what is actually a really solid set of three figures that do a really good job of representing their characters. This is some of the best Mega Man I've seen at retail. Like, the, the articulation and accessories are spot on. I like the choice of characters for the first wave because I feel like... The go-to is Cut Man, but they've intentionally avoided that, which I think is the right call. Uh, and yeah, like, it's just exceptionally well done. Like I said, there are effects and tricks here that even beat some of the high-end Mega Man figures I have. You know, and if you're looking for, like, the more retro aesthetic, it hits it spot on. I really like how they do these, but I'm so worried because Mega Man toy lines tend to fall into the same traps. Jada seems to be avoiding that somewhat. Wave 2 is going to continue uh, the first game with Elect Man, but it's also going to include Woodman, which means they're willing to venture out into the other games before they finish the first. Has me a little bit nervous about getting all six of the originals out, but at the same time, a lot of these don't make it very long because they always do the first six, which means we get a lot of re repetition, which isn't interesting. So, I'm kind of glad they're going this route, uh, but they're also packing in a uh, an alternate version of Mega Man with extra parts, and I'm not too crazy about that. I'm looking for Proto Man, Roll, Base, you know, the other main characters of the franchise to take that slot and then, you know, work between, like, Year One Robot Masters and random popular ones. You know, we need, you know, we need this line to go long enough to do, like, Metal Man, Air Man, Skull Man, like, just, like, really popular ones, Top Man. 
okay, Top Man might just be my pick. Okay, leave me alone. I like Top Man. But again, it's some fantastic, fantastic Mega Man stuff. Uh, if this has interested you in them at all, then I will leave a link to Entertainment Earth. Last I checked, Iceman is currently in stock, whereas Mega Man and Fireman, they are waiting for a restock in March. So if you want these for yourself, please consider using the link in the description. If they are in stock, the link is going to save you 10% on the order. But either way, it's going to help out the channel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to tell Jada Toys we need more and this line needs to continue. So there's Mega Man. He's back again, and hopefully this toy line sticks around because I have high hopes for it. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.